Hey everybody, I'm Boobs Kelly. Welcome back to another video. Today, I have something new and fun for you. We are going to take a deep dive into the wardrobe of the film Knives Out. Now, I'm fully aware there's already a sequel that's been out for a while, uh, Glass Onion, but I figured we might as well start with the first one. I saw it when it came out in theaters and then I rewatched it for this video. The costume and wardrobe for each character is so rich and it enhances each character so much that it really benefited the storyline a great deal. Full disclosure, I do like the movie and I love the cast. It's a fantastic film, but it's also a decadent, unctuous feast for the eyes. And the set designs are also just super rich. They set the perfect tone. The costume design was impeccable. And of course, the clothes benefit from the set and lighting, of course, but also the actors themselves. You can really tell when an actor loves their costume, their wardrobe. Of these characters and in other movies where you have this similar effect, the, the actors and the characters appear very much in their clothes, like sunken in lived in, comfortable. It's well fitted, but it also just like goes with the vibe of the character really, really well. And it all has this perfect harmony with the actors that just enhance the story so much and, and the movie make it that much better. I found the visuals of this film to be very appealing all throughout and it just all came together perfectly. It really is like an appetizing movie to look at. Good looking movie. So if you haven't watched it yet, please do. And then you can come back and, and chat about the clothes and the movie with me here. If you guys like this format, it's something totally different. I haven't done something like this, at least not in a long time. So if you guys do like this format, you have to let me know in the comments and click the like button and I will do Glass Onion, which is the sequel to this, or if you have suggestions of a different movie that you'd like me to do, leave it in the comments. So this movie has an autumnal vibe, but it's also a lot of wintry clothes because it's very cold, the setting of this movie. So it's a perfect fall wonderland and, and the epitome of an autumnal wardrobe with really relatively timeless fall fashion, but that also, of course, bleeds into winter. The costume designer was Jenny Egan, and she did just a really fabulous job. Let's begin with Daniel Craig's character, which is the snappy, snazzy, suit-loving detective Benoit Blanc. He is meant to be this, you know, straight-talking, southern drawl private detective, but she struck the perfect balance to not, like, turn him into full-blown Colonel Sanders, just really dramatically over-the-top, sort of a loud southern gentleman look, because he does need to be able to blend in. The expression in his wardrobe is in little touches, like he has floral ties, pocket squares, suspenders. That way he could be more discreet, but you still get the vibe that he is a little bit more flamboyant, which is a great example of Jenny Egan's approach for all the characters in this film. They all have a really great balance to ensure that their wardrobe was not a distraction away from the character themselves or the storyline is really important in a film like this one because distracting costume can take you out of the moment, kind of dampen the suspense or the, the intrigue. But when the clothing contribute to the character and storyline, then it enhances the moment and richens the experience overall. So you get so much intel off of what each character is wearing without everything needing to be explained and spelled out verbatim which is fascinating and something that I really like when watching a film is those little details in how the character is designed. And at first, Detective Blanc is kind of in the background in a way, and he's just in this more simple and dark outfit. But as he goes and as the story rolls on, his outfits do expand along with his presence in the film. There's also Lakeith Stanfield, who plays a detective in this movie. He was in the, uh, m the new Haunted Mansion, which I really, really liked his look in that movie as well. But in this movie, he is Detective Lieutenant Elliot, and he has these perfectly tailored cozy coats on throughout. The weight of these coats, the visual weight of them, just enhances the look. You can almost feel it yourself. One thing you'll notice throughout the movie is that everything looks touchable. The use of texture really kind of pulls you into the movie, and they did such a good job of invoking that sense of touch. You can imagine how these clothes feel on the skin. And not all movies are successful in that, but it's invaluable because it really creates a more immersive aspect to the movie. Christopher Plummer plays Harlan Thrombey, which is like the, the patriarch of this family. 
And when asked, Egan said that he was one of the biggest challenges. She had picked out really bold choices, and at first he was sort of hesitant, but once he saw the house and how eccentric it is, and he became so open to the pink shirt and plaid coat that he was pushing for it himself. There was a restrained eccentricity to Harlan. He was a self-made man of means whose mind, as a murder mystery writer, was built to imagine an endless tangled web of possibilities. This purposeful chaos was reflected in the plaid and pink all packaged in a perfectly tailored suit. It was really the perfect combination of both wealth and intrigue with an unexpected color or pattern combination. And the color mixing and pattern mixing that they had with Harlan, but also with all the characters, was really, really interesting and created a really great aesthetic for the movie. His house was also really interesting. The set was amazing. There was just fascinating art pieces everywhere you looked. Love Jamie Lee Curtis, and she did a stellar job as always as Linda Drysdale here. She wore bold colors and monochrome looks. She has an elegant sort of upper high class persona. She's also trying to sell herself as a real estate mogul, so she's got this fast paced air and she leans really professional. Apparently, Jamie Lee Curtis had a very strong idea herself for this character. She gave Egan, the costume designer, pictures of a friend of hers for inspiration, which is kind of funny. And Linda is really just kind of an intense character and bold in a good way throughout this movie. So the structure of this red suit and the jewelry that really pops against it here, it's got these puff sleeves, it's got this wide leg that's not puddling or dramatic, it's just a perfect balance. The scarf accent encourages a vertical line right here, which prevents the high-waistedness of the pants from chopping her up too much. And I can't tell if it's like a, a jacket or just part of the shirt. I think it's just part of the shirt, this scarf that comes down. She kind of has this breezy and distant vibe, but still kind. She might be one of the more kind and less conniving of all the people, but she still has, you know, an, a bit of an edge to her. The costume designer pointed out how her husband's outfits needed to complement and convey the dynamic of their relationship as a couple. Don Johnson played her husband Richard, and she was the breadwinner of that family, and he was just kind of hanging on, and the costume designer wanted you to be able to get pick up on the fact that she probably bought his clothes. And she says that's what she said when she spoke with Don, that, that it's all really elegant and kind of has this clean and simple vibe, which is very much like his character is just kind of simple and not very commanding in any of the situations. And that's conveyed perfectly in his much more basic wardrobe. Personally, I love her red pantsuit here. I mean, it is ultra high waist, but the framing that has this scarf coming down kind of mutes that high waistedness a little bit and encourages that vertical line to combat that waistline. This teal suit I find to be the best that she has on. It's got this pale satin underneath and it's just a beautiful color combination. I'm obsessed. It, it looks like something you would want to wear. Toni Collette plays Joni Thromby, and this is another one of my favorite aesthetics of the film just because she's so eccentric. Her character is kind of the antithesis to Linda, and she's in these flowy, lacy, sort of sheer fabrics that had an elegance but a softness to them. She runs a lifestyle brand that's focused on easy and calm vibes, so she has an almost boho element to her wardrobe. She needed that drapey but still fitted, light-feeling clothing. Her character is also obsessed with like looking expensive and does some shady stuff throughout the movie. She's always selling her brand through herself. And so she has these fabulous blouses, lots of weird or unexpected pattern mixing, tons of accessories, very, very fixed up and sort of high maintenance vibes and almost dressing younger for her age, still feminine, but almost a little too girly for it to really work perfectly. So that showed us a lot about her character that as the film progressed and more unfolds about her, I'm trying to avoid any spoilers for anybody who's not yet watched it. Her wardrobe did a really good job of personifying her character. This movie is interesting in part because there's not a clear main character, but we see the events unfold through Marta's eyes. She is played by Ana de Armas. She is the nurse to Harlan, and so she has the least expensive looking wardrobe in the film, which sets her apart from the rest of the family, which is necessary for demonstrating the definition between these character dynamics, as she's, she is sort of the, the one present at the house who is not part of the family. 
She is comfortable with Harlan and in her job, so she looks accustomed to the home and the environment, which is really exemplified in her very comfortable looking outfits. We don't have too tight clothing. We have warm, calming looks on her. She's got a little bit of an edge of a quirkiness to her, but the whole movie has so much texture and satin. There's corduroy and denim and wool, thick coats, lots of patterned layers and interesting and unexpected color or fabric mixing that just draw a lot of interest and give you lots to look at as you watch the movie. Because it is a movie that has a lot of talking happening. It's it's very much lots and lots of dialogue. So having a more interesting wardrobe or just lots of little things that still flow together give you more time to really soak it all in and not get distracted away from what's being said because you're still focused on the characters, but not bored either. My favorite character in the film is Ransom. I absolutely love. It's one of my favorite boy names too. He might be the preppiest vibe in the film and I'm just, I'm obsessed with his wardrobe for it. I do love a preppy look, but not like exclusively. But Chris Evans and this sweater, thanks to Jenny Egan, accidentally or maybe unsurprisingly, I guess, perhaps, launched this character Ransom into sexy icon fashion goals. Everybody wanted this sweater for the man in their life. No one didn't want to cozy up to this sweater. It was a whole thing that year. I really appreciate the layering that they did here because those of us who lives in areas that get cold know the power of layering. It's, it's my favorite part of the cooler weather months is getting to layer up because you have to, because you go into a place you need to take off layers. If the sun comes out, you need to take off layers. So everybody who lives in cold areas does that, but it's a wonderful thing for film because you can just keep introducing more and more texture and pattern and in color and things like that that are interesting to look at and add more detail to the character's looks. And so his most like flamboyant look was probably this scarf here. It's very, very feminine and fancy looking, but it goes with the outfit perfectly and he wears it with such confidence. And in this moment, in this scene where he has this outfit on, he's very much being rude. So it enhanced his character even more to give him that this specific look in this moment where he was just freely being rude to everyone around. Later we see him in the big chunky sweater with the holes where it's a little bit more unassuming and he's trying to reassure Marta and things like that. So he's wearing something more cozy and warm looking. So it's just a ex perfect example of how they shifted Ransom's clothing aesthetic for how he was approaching any given moment or other character in the film. Egan said that she wanted to convey the entitled rich boy aspect, that he buys nice things but isn't looking after them, and she inadvertently sent fans into a tizzy over his delicious sweater despite the hole, which ended up looking more endearing than just careless. But Ransom is my favorite character for countless reasons, and his contradictions are part of that because I find it just really interesting. It's quite fascinating. He looks like he's melted into his clothes, just very comfortable and perfectly aligned with his attitude in any given scene. Walt is another character played by Michael Shannon, and he wears brown like the whole time. It's just this dated, boring, drab wardrobe, but that's perfect for his character because he is also just kind of sheepish and drab and in the background more so. He's not as out there and and causing any sort of a ruckus throughout the movie. But overall, the knitwear in this movie is fabulous. So many of the clothes and the coats and the outfits were, are things that I think have a timeless element to them that people will still, if you haven't seen the movie or you haven't seen it in a while, it won't feel too dated. I mean, maybe a little bit here and there, but really it won't too awful much. There's really great coats. There's more characters than this, but it's, these are just the best of the dressed from Knives Out. And personally, when I think of wardrobe in film, it's one, at least for modern movies lately, it's one that has some of the more interesting approaches, and especially with Ransom, because the other characters, we see them kind of stick with one aesthetic throughout the film and one sort of vibe with their clothes that's sent throughout the film that's consistent. But Ransom's definitely changes a lot. And obviously, if you've seen the movie, you know why. So leave it in the comments what you thought of today's video. Thank you so much for watching this video with me and being here with me while I did something new and different. I will see you next time, and I hope you have a very happy day ahead. Bye!